just got done. We just dropped off our our Taita. Yeah, which is a shaman. We took the shaman with us. I was gonna say like we should film that. But yeah. then I was like, eh. 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 I really liked the experience, but not because of why I originally thought I was gonna like it. What I got out of this was that the realization that I can continue to do stuff like this, but I have been given the answers. Like, I know the answers, and I just need to... So, like, the visions I was having? Yeah. Dude. <laughs> this... I have like a, an anxiety about like doing things in front of crowds and a lot of like what I want to continue to break through is is just being comfortable with that and and just like you know having more confidence to take our business to the next level to the next level to the next level um, and so I had this like vision of me there was a huge pole, like picture a fireman's pole, mm -hmm. in the middle of a Broadway show in New York City, mm -hmm. and I was doing. You were stripping. I was I was stripping, bro. No, I was doing Japanese like acrobatic stuff, and I was just killing it, and it was so real, and like people in the crowd were like reacting, and then I would be in their bodies. Mm. It was very odd. What I liked about this was that ayahuasca to me was like the pinnacle of like, no, there's like deeper shit inside me, like I have to get out. And like, if I don't react and like a really, if I don't like barf the whole night and like have these crazy like hallucinations then I'm not getting to the core of what's going on. And I pretty much just realized like, dude, you can, after I took the first cup, I was like, Dan, you kind of know what's gonna happen if you take the second cup. Like, you're gonna, it's gonna do a little bit. And then if you take a third cup, like, probably do a little bit. I just realized that what we're doing here at Zen Dude Fitness and the, the, the direction we're headed in is the right direction. And to just cut out all the bullshit and all the, the noise and thinking, thinking to myself that there's something inside of me that's not complete that I need to figure out before we can move forward to that next level. And this ayahuasca trip basically showed me that by, by nothing really happening, by not something like really jolting me, it was more of like, and I could have taken more. I could have taken more and had a crazy experience like visually, but I really think at the end of the day, it would have just been, I would have had the same realization of you're going in the right direction, continue to be confident, continue to move forward. That's what I got. Dude, I feel like I had your experience up until when I fell asleep. So my intention going into this thing was like, I just want to work on patience so I can get more present and like just, you know, just continue to live a happier and happier life. Like that's the end goal always at Zen New Fitness and like obviously my dance life is how do we get, how do we live the happiest life possible? And a big part of that for me is like becoming more patient, becoming more present. And so, of course, because I set this intention, there's 19 people at this ceremony. And I think what, like, there was like three of us who took a second cup. Yeah, not many. Three people took a second cup and like, I was the only person who took a second cup and like still didn't throw up. And I was like, or, you know, vomit, purge, whatever. And I was like, really? Cause like usually you, you purge and then like you start to get more like an intense experience. And so I was like, all right, I kind of got to where, where Dan was just saying, where I was like, well, I learned that, you know, at the end of the day, I know everything I need to know, like I'm good and I can just go to sleep now. And I'm, I'm happy, it was a good experience. And then I woke up, I woke up like, I don't know, after maybe an hour or so, and I just heard this like woman's voice calling me, like spiritual woman's voice calling me, who was saying like, like this, basically she was telling me I had to go throw up. She was like, this is like, I don't remember exactly what she said, but something along the lines of, you have to like pay this toll to enter the next level. And so like, I got up, I went and like threw up. And so I went and purged and I came back and when I came back, uh, I lay back down and I started to have like this experience where I was like coming in and out of like reality where there was like this spiritual woman, you know, I, I'm sure like someone who like is, is very, you know, is Jahe or Ayahuasca well, would be like, oh yeah, that was like this uh, spirit, the Ayahuasca spirit. And she's basically saying like, 
you have to let go and you have to let go of like this physical body if you want to go to the next level and so I was like going back and forth between like laying because it's cold we we're in the mountains like shivering it was freezing freezing shivering in my physical body and then completely snapping out of it not shivering at all and like going to this other dimension or something and like being completely like comfortable but also having a lot of like I don't know like kind of scary visuals like it was like a spear was like testing me and like messing with me being like are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? And I kind of went back and forth between this for, I don't know, an hour or two until I got to a point where I was like, I couldn't let go of me. I couldn't let go of the physical body to completely go to that other space. And so I kind of, I was like, you know what? What I can do is like, I can go integrate. And there was like a big circle around a fire of, you know, people. Ah, that's why you went and sat down. Exactly. Okay, I people saw that. Music and like, everyone was just like, singing songs of like gratitude and just beautiful stuff, all in Spanish. Don't know what they're saying. It was awesome. It was wonderful though. And I went and sat in there and I was like, you know what? The, the work is being able to take all this stuff, whether I'm living in another dimension or whatever happened, and integrating it in the world and like bringing this love to what I do in my everyday life. And it was just like this like fluidity, fluid energy moving through me just saying like, yo, you need to bring this like love you're feeling, this, this integration more into Zen New Fitness. You need to bring this energy more into, you need to give more, you need to be more present you need to be more with it and you have to like with everything you're doing with all the experience you have because a lot of times I do let my mind go wherever for the next task and this was an opportunity for me to like just sit there and like you know I took out some little shakers I started playing some music with them and really just integrated in that moment and, and that was the work and I think um, I'm curious to maybe do Jahe again because this is my, that was my second time doing it, and the first time like nothing nothing happened the first time. The second time it's like basically some spirit whatever. Like the whole time I'm battling in my head because I'm like, yeah, it's a spirit. No, it's not. It's like my own brain. It's my neuroscience, like telling me these stories because I've heard stories before. Whatever it is, maybe it's just my brain firing telling me it's these things. Maybe it is a spirit possessing my soul. Whatever it is. Uh, I had a taste of it and it was kind of intense and I kind of want to go back and see what else is there because she kept telling me like there's like this there's a ceiling and I couldn't break through it she's like just wait and see what will happen to your whole life including your business everything once you can break through the ceiling and live up here dude that's super interesting because I think it is like my opinion I mean doesn't matter like we both have our opinions on this like I like for me personally I think it's whatever you create in your mind like I was trying to get weird and yeah. and my and it was like and my body was like Dan you're not gonna trip balls stop it Dude. like you're not you don't need to do that anymore. like the, the funny thing is like the first time I did Jahe I tried to do that and nothing happened and this time I was like no I don't I was like nothing's gonna happen to me I was like nothing's gonna happen and so like I was like whatever nothing's happening like this stuff isn't real whatever like I was just logical you know right brain thinking everything and then when I fell asleep that's what allowed like whatever to seep in and wake me up with this so the thing about psychedelics is they just wake you up to what's real and that's basically what Dan and I have both been talking about it's like what's real what's real is that like we're on the right path and the more the more deep we go with this, the more present we get, the more fun we have, the more we enjoy the process, the better things are gonna go. And like, it's, these psychedelics and things like this just remind you of that and to, you know, remind you what's most important. Yeah, and let's not get it, you know, Brent and I, like like he said, we do, we do these things for educational purposes. All right, Zendu Nation, now it's time to reintegrate back into the city of Medellin. I'm gonna go home and sleep. He's gonna go home and maybe sleep. Yeah. I don't know what he's gonna do. We didn't sleep last night. Oh yeah, there's no sleep till yeah. Brooklyn. Well, I guess I guess maybe got like an hour or two each. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, that's true. It could have been four. Could have been four minutes. Could have been five minutes. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Don't know. But what we do know is that we love you, and we'll see you on tomorrow's vlog, Zendu Nation. All right.
right, you guys, we usually don't do this, but yesterday we were recording uh, our ayahuasca... Like, at the end of it. We were recording, we were unpacking our ayahuasca trip, and then the SIM card got full, and then our battery died, it, basically everything happened so we couldn't finish the video. So this video is actually, like, Brandon's gonna post this in a few hours. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing right now is today and yesterday. Yes. So, and you're gonna throw in a clip, right? Of our, we started to talk about it yesterday on the car ride home, and then the battery was like, screw you. Yeah. Screws. So you guys just saw that. You saw it, like, a second ago. Right there. You just saw it. Yeah. And now we're re-engaging to finish that conversation and talk about, yeah, our experiences and, you know, Dan's experience. You guys just saw. You heard from it. You heard most of my experience. I think we just wanted to, just package everything up and and share with you guys a little bit more about like what we learned from the overall experience. I and mean, it's cool to do this now because we're one day removed. So I think we have a little bit, bit greater perspective. <clears throat> and I know Dan and I both have something we want to share. So we're going to do a little uh, pop, what's it called? Popcorn? We're going to do a little popcorn sharing. So Dan, you popcorn first. Thanks, dude. <laughs> um, all I was going to say was that uh, this is something I noticed uh, yesterday. In the car ride home, I think I had a little bit more of like, it was good, but not what I expected. And I also figured out why, I didn't tell you this yet. So, I said it in my vlog like 10 minutes ago. Um, one thing I didn't like about the trip initially, and especially like yesterday as we were going through it, was that I realized that I was getting irritated without knowing it, like subconsciously, mm -hmm. that I couldn't control the environment. Mm -hmm. So like, when we've done other psychedelics, it's like you and me are like, okay, let's go here, do whatever and, you want. Yeah, and then take it, and then we're gonna trip, learn some stuff, and then go do whatever we want and leave. Um, you with this, we you don't like this. structure. You don't like the structure. I don't like structure, and so like we went there, and the, the shaman who was like, like we said, an awesome dude, who like we definitely will. I would love to do it with him again. Yeah, I'd love to do it with him too. Oh, you bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we. Where's I go with that? Uh, oh, he got there late. It's freezing cold. We're sitting outside the entire time. So after we take the ayahuasca, I'm also puking, so I'm not feeling that great. I don't really want to talk to everyone. And like some of the people had super intense experiences and were, for lack of a better phrase, kind of annoying. And it just like, I'm trying to sit there like and have my thoughts. And I'm freezing cold. I got blankets wrapped around me. So I realized that that played a role went during the trip of making it like, why can't I just take my cup and then like go do my, like go walk around or do my own thing. Like, why does that have to be freezing cold? Yeah. Um, so I think what I, then I woke up today with just a huge amount of happiness. Like mm -hmm. I felt rested and in thinking about, I felt, I feel so light today. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that like, That's I don't it. know if you've noticed, yeah, like I feel very light and also jovial. Jovial, mm -hmm. good word. Yeah, thank you. I do, I feel much better, much more present, and just a little bit taken down a notch. Like not in terms of my energy levels, mm -hmm. but just I'm kind of like lightweight, like cool. I'm yeah, good. I think it's a perfect timing because everything in our lives is really heavy. You just got a relationship. The business is getting super intense. Like we literally can't handle what's happening right now, but we're just rolling with it. And so it's a good time to like, kind of like, it's like, yeah, listen, all this stuff you're doing, eh, it's serious, but it's not that serious. Exactly. Dude, that's, that's a great point. Cause like, even today, yo, we're like, what time, time is it? Five o'clock? I feel like it's 10 in the morning. Yeah. Like it's just, we've been at it all day long. And yeah, I think the ayahuasca for me just kind of was like, yo, you go do your human thing, you keep growing your business, like I get it, but like don't freak out, man. Like it's gonna, it's one, gonna be fine. Um, if you keep working like this, you're going to succeed. And number two, it doesn't matter. You can choose to be stressed out or not. Mm -hmm. So choose not to be. Yep. Make sure it's still recording. <clears throat> cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And for me, there is like a lot of beautiful stuff that happened. I guess during the ceremony and then like reflecting afterwards and one great example is like you get like a one-on-one -on -one session with the Taita, the guy who led the ceremony, the indigenous dude and afterwards he like shares some things that are really helpful for me. He was like, do you like 
have prayer in your life at all? And I was like, no, because I'm not really a religious person, but I told him, I shared, like, I believe in something bigger than me. I don't know what that is. I just know that there's some kind of redemptive, uh, there's some kind of redemptive force in the universe that, you know, creates awesome things if you put your intention in the right place. And he was like, well, you know, you can, like, pray to that. Like, whenever things seem out of control and you're like, why is this happening? Or why isn't this happening? Why hasn't this happened yet? Just, like, do a form of prayer of, like, yo, I don't know what's happening, but I'm assuming that whatever it is, is for my best interest and I'm just going to let go of feeling I have to, like I have to hold on to something and force it to happen. Yeah. And so that was awesome. The second part was my patience thing, right? And I think I talked about this a little bit in the video you just watched, but I was trying to work on patience and something he said was like, when you feel impatient, when you want something to happen faster or you're impatient with like how people are acting or treating you or just how things are going to take a moment to stop and kind of recondition your mind, Tony Robbins yourself or neuro-linguistic programming yourself to shift the way you're seeing the world in that moment. And I had a perfect opportunity. Last night, uh, my free union, my girlfriend. <laughs> my free union. I don't know what to do. Yo, my, yo, free. My free union. Yo, free you. What up, baby? My girl has some of her friends over, some of the Colombian homies, awesome dudes. And I went to go pick up some pizzas. And this kind of stuff happens to me all the time in Colombia. Like, I'm speaking things correctly, but things just don't work out the way that I want them to. So I asked for two large pizzas and I got a large and a medium after like, you know, drilling them super hard, like this is what I wanted. And I was like, oh, you know, I started to get upset. Like, dude, like I literally said what I wanted. Why didn't you give me what I asked for? Uh, and a lot of times in the US, like when there's a problem with like service or something like that, they just give you what you asked for for free. Here in Columbia, a lot of times they're just like, oh, like sucks for you, you don't get like a refund, you don't get anything else, like good luck. And so when I went through that, I, I used the thing that he taught me, which was imagine like kissing your girlfriend or the person that you love and like what that experience is like and bringing up that impatience or that feeling that you feel and then kind of smothering it with this feeling of love or what it's like to have a hug that, I, that feels awesome or a kiss or like sharing that moment. And I did that and it worked. And it was super cool because it, it, for me, like I, and for Dan too, we went into this ayahuasca or jahe experience to come out a better person, to grow, and to get act, like actual things we can do. And so now I have tools going forward in my life to be happier and to just be more present. And like Dan said, like we feel it today. Like it's something that we're carrying with us, and it's awesome. And that's why I think we think it's so important to do something to shake your cage and get out of your comfort zone every like three to four months, whether it be psychedelics or, you know, jumping in the cold, freezing cold water. Exactly. Or a meditation retreat or like something just out of your comfort zone. We're going and like learning Tantra, which I did the other day. Yeah. <laughs> learning just, a new language. I mean, there's yeah. so much that you can do guys. So just remember to rattle your cage a little bit and get yourself into a state of being where you're not thinking the way you usually think. That's, that's all we're asking for and that's all we're, we're encouraging you to do here. And that's the end of the vlog. Totally didn't lose my mind or anything on ayahuasca. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. <laughs>